Hello, Pleasant Avenue students and families. Welcome to Pleasant Avenue Elementary School. I am Mrs. Cotter, the principal at Pleasant Avenue. My job is to keep everyone safe, make sure students are learning and following the rules, and to make sure everyone is having fun doing it. The entire staff is excited to see you on your first day of school. In this presentation, we will be going over the expectations of students and families as we start this school year. On the first day of school, students should arrive on time, bring their Chromebooks fully charged, bring any supplies that were purchased, wear the name tag that was provided at device pickup. Parents, you should plan on taking pictures before arrival since you need to stay in your car during drop off. In the first few weeks of school, we will spend doing student orientations, assessments, learning, and socialization. Students will be required to wear a mask when riding on a school bus, six feet social distancing cannot be maintained, in hallways, when walking to the restroom, and in PE and music class when 12 feet distancing cannot be maintained. Students will be given mask breaks throughout the day in their classrooms. It is a good idea to get your child used to wearing a mask now. Here is a message from the school nurse, Mrs. Sencio. Hello, Pleasant Ave families. I'm Mrs. Sencio, and I'll be your building nurse this year. As we begin this new year, I'd like to remind you of a few things before sending your children to school each day. Please take their temperatures, send them with a mask, and if they're not feeling well, please keep them home. I'm looking forward to a new year, a new school, and to meeting all of you. If you have any questions, please feel free to call me. Enjoy the rest of the summer, and we'll see you soon. When students arrive, they should come between 8.30 and 8.55 a.m. Bus students will enter through the front door. Walkers, riders, and bikers will enter through the side door on Linden Avenue. Students' temperatures will be taken at both doors, and students purchasing breakfast will pick it right up at the table and bring it to their classroom to enjoy. Students will then go directly to their classrooms to start morning work. At dismissal, bus students will be dismissed first in the front loop. Walkers will be dismissed from the gym. Parents, you should remain socially distanced while waiting for your child to be released to you. And families utilizing the loop, number tag should be on the rear view mirror. And students will be walked to the cars and required to open their own doors. Families with multiple children in elementary schools should pick Warren Street students first and then proceed to Pleasant Avenue. If you have any transportation questions, call the main office. Here are some pictures of the classrooms at Pleasant Avenue. Desks are all six feet apart. There are limited materials on the hard surfaces. Students will still have the opportunity to, to learn and have a positive experience. Physical education will be held outside or in the gym. All other specials will be held in the classrooms. Students will have 20 minutes for lunch and 20 minutes of daily recess. Recess will be held outside, weather permitting. Hi everyone, I'm Rachel Harris and I'm the Tech Director at Johnstown. And I wanna share a little bit about the Chromebook that we will be providing to your student. We are providing Chromebooks to all students K through 12. So your student will be receiving one. If you're not familiar with a Chromebook, it is very similar to a laptop, but it does not run the traditional Windows software. It runs a software called Chrome Operating System, and it essentially is just a web browser, and all of the applications that we use within it are web-based, and they can be accessed through Google Chrome. So it eliminates the need for um, software downloads and a lot of extra memory. So they're great for students. They're really quick. They boot up quickly. Um, they're nice and compact, and they are pretty durable. Um, so this model that I have in my hand is the Lenovo 500e. These are being provided to all of our Pleasant Avenue students and some of our Warren Street students. So some of our Warren Street students are also getting a Dell model instead. It depends on the grade level and within some of the grade levels, it is mixed. Um, so I am speaking of the Lenovo 500e, um, but I will tell you what features are the same on the Dell Chromebook. So both the Lenovo and the Dell Chromebook are convertible touchscreen Chromebooks. And what that means is that if I open it up, um, 
this screen you can interact with with your finger. And when I say convertible, what I mean by that is the screen actually flips all the way around. So you can use it as a traditional laptop setup, but you can also swivel this all the way around. And this is on the Lenovo 500 e and the Dell 2-in-1 model. And once you flip it around, that puts it in tablet mode, which is really, really great for um, especially young students if they want to sit down and have it on their lap. Maybe they're in a beanbag chair um, and they can just interact with it like they would with an iPad or another tablet. Now, if they put it in um, tablet mode, it will automatically disable the physical keyboard and the touchpad so that they won't be accidentally hitting the keys while it's on their lap and an on-screen keyboard will appear. There's also a webcam built into it and a microphone built into it. So it will be all set up for Zoom calls with their teachers. Now, if they are in a room with um, other children or other noises in the background, we do recommend that they get on Zoom calls with headphones. Um, so we did add those to the supply list and we're asking that parents provide um, either earbuds or headphones for their students. You'll want to make sure that they do have a microphone. Most earbuds these days that you find do have a microphone, but some of the over the ear headphones do not. So you'll want to make sure that they have a microphone so that they can interact with the teacher. Um, and the headphones just plug into this headphone jack right here. It's just a traditional headphone jack. It's a 3.5 millimeter audio cable, just like most of the earbuds that you find out there. So a couple other things I just want to point out is um, we track all of our Chromebooks through an inventory system that tracks the serial number and the asset tag. So you want to make sure that your student does not pull the asset tag off. Make sure that they know that that label needs to stay there. It helps us track it. Um, if it does fall off for some reason, just make sure you let the classroom teacher know and we can get a new one and re-add it to inventory. Your student will also have a label right here that has their name and grade on it. So make sure that the student leaves that. That's just so that we can quickly know whose Chromebook is whose at a glance to make sure that only your child is using their Chromebook and that they're not, um, that no one else is touching it. Now, one more thing that I wanna point out, and this is specific to the Lenovo 500e model, which again is everyone at Pleasant Avenue and some of our Warren Street students. So if your student does end up with a Dell Chromebook at um, Warren Street, they will not have this feature. But if they do have a Lenovo 500e, they have this little stylus right here. It's built into the Chromebook and you can just kind of use your fingernail and pull it out. And it's a nice fine tip, hard point um, stylus. And what's really nice about it is it's built for this um, Chromebook specifically. And if the student is writing with it and they rest their hand as they're writing, it will only recognize the stylus and not their hand. So that's really, really handy for especially our youngest students. And it slides right in here to store. So these are really, really hard to find replacements for. And if it does get lost, we will have to charge families for it. So make sure that your child knows that it always has to go back in the Chromebook and that they need to be very, very careful not to lose it. So that is um, our Chromebook in a nutshell. And in a few moments, we will go into how you can care for it and clean it, as well as um, some of the apps that we're using with the Chromebooks. So a couple notes about keeping those Chromebooks safe. Um, for all of your children's Chromebooks, you'll want to make sure that they do not have any food or drinks around the Chromebook and that they wash their hands before using so that we don't get any stickiness on the keyboard. Um, they want to carry it with two hands. We always say, hug it like you love it, really carry that thing carefully. Um, when they're transporting back and forth to school, transport it in their backpack and make sure that it's away from food or liquid. So if your child is bringing their water bottle to school, make sure that that's on an outside pocket um, and not in the same section of the backpack as the Chromebook. And when you're at home and it's not in use, make sure that it's kept in a secure location, maybe up in a cabinet or in a desk drawer. Um, away from younger siblings, away from pets and um, any other, you know, food or anything at, at home that would affect the Chromebook. And you want to make sure that your child is only using it for school-related purposes. Um, we do have filtering systems in place and monitoring systems so we can see what students are doing. They will be blocked from inappropriate content and we do have a system that flags us if they are 
visiting inappropriate websites or if they use any terms that are related to violence or self-harm and we can take action on that. Um, and I just want to remind you that families will be charged for any damage or loss. So if a screen does get broken or a you know, key pops off of the keyboard or the Chromebook is stolen or lost, families will be charged for up to the full value of replacement, which depends on the Chromebook model and how old it is, but um, it's typically right around $350. And then for our Pleasant Avenue students, um, we have some recommendations for how you're going to clean your Chromebooks. So the best thing that we have found are to use Lysol disinfecting wipes. And I know that they're hard to find right now, um, but if you do have them, just make sure that you squeeze it out before you clean the Chromebook with it because right out of the bottle, they're a little bit too wet to use directly on the Chromebook. So squeeze out the extra liquid and then you can wipe it down. So if you can't find a Lysol wipe, um, other screen and electronic cleaners work well. Endust is one of the brands that we use a lot. Those will not disinfect though, so just be aware of that. Um, but again, this Chromebook is just meant for your one student, so that will eliminate the sharing of germs. You can also use distilled water just on a cloth stampin. Never put water directly on it, of course. Um, and we recommend that you don't use tap water because that can leave minerals on the screen. Um, so things that you want to make sure that you avoid are, like I said, putting water directly on it, um, bleach, window cleaner, any aerosol spray or any kitchen cleaner, and absolutely never spray directly onto the Chromebook. So that's how you clean it. And then um, for our Pleasant Avenue students, they have a unique way of logging into the Chromebook. So we use what are called quick cards, and it's a little QR code that is custom for each student. And when you turn the Chromebook on, the sign-in screen, as you can see in this video, um, the sign-in screen that comes up is a webcam view, and your child will just hold up their quick card to the webcam, and it will automatically sign them into the Chromebook, as you can see here. And once it boots up, the first page that will show up is what's called Class Link, and that's our app dashboard, and they will see icons that they can click on to access um, all of the applications that we use in school, and most of them will automatically sign the child in. If you do need any passwords, the teacher will provide them to you. And if you are in need of tech support, um, we are adding a button to our website that looks like this, that says Tech Help for Students. And if you click there, it will provide all the information that you need. We will have an online ticketing system and a phone number that you can call, as well as several other resources to help you troubleshoot on your own. So I'm Mrs. Panton. I am the Director of Curriculum and Professional Development here at Johnstown. So um, we want to talk to you a little bit about the K2 learning expectations for moving forward. So um, your teachers will be providing a schedule or a suggested schedule for um, your students to complete their learning when they're at home um, doing their virtual days. So it is suggested that they follow that schedule um, to help make sure that they're staying on track and that they're not missing any assignments. Um, there will be an expectation that our students will attend the Zoom meetings that are scheduled. These will be all pre-scheduled meetings that the student will know about ahead of time, and so will families. Um, the expectation is that all of our students will attend their homeroom, and this is for attendance purposes so that we can ensure that our, our students get their attendance taken each day. Um, and it will also be expected that they attend um, special areas and small group instruction um, in the Zoom format. Additional meetings may be available as the year goes on, so just be aware of that. In a moment, we'll talk about expectations when we go on a Zoom call, and what that looks like. Um, additionally, we would expect all of our students to complete all assigned on-demand lessons from the classroom and the special area teacher. So these are not optional lessons. These are required lessons in order for our students to be successful moving forward. So that again is for all of their classroom teachers and their work that they do with them, but then also our special area teachers. So our art, music, media, and PE teachers will also have assignments that students need to be completing on a regular basis as well. And then finally, um, we are going to continue using iReady, which is a platform that individualizes lessons for ELA and mathematics for students based on a completion of a diagnostic assessment. 
Um, the diagnostic assessment will be completed at school with the students and for our remote only students, they will have an opportunity to complete it at home. Um, however, our students will be able to start their lessons right away um, prior to getting the diagnostic done. So your teachers will be working with your students on how to log into the iReady platform and how to start using that platform as we go forward. The expectation is that our students will complete a minimum of 45 minutes in ELA and of 45 minutes of math um, each week. So additionally, we'll have a parent university or a family university where we'll go through iReady and, the, and what you can expect uh, as a parent um, or a family member um, to understand how to use iReady with your child. So when we're on a Zoom meeting, we do have um, district-wide expectations for our students. So prior to the meeting, we're going to ask that you make sure that your student is on time to those Zoom meetings. Um, we have limited time with each of our children, so we want to make sure that we can use that time to the best extent possible. Um, we also want to make sure that you have the required materials for the meeting. So your teachers will tell you ahead of time what your student should have in place and be prepared to bring when they come to the Zoom meeting. So make sure that you help your student um, get those things ready for them as well. Um, we encourage that you find a quiet space with limited interruptions. We understand that you might have um, multiple students um, at the same time on a Zoom call. So find a upper space that they can all be at if possible, um, or use the headphones that Mrs. Harris had spoke about earlier. Um, and then finally, make sure that the background that your student has is appropriate. Um, we don't want any profanity or any inappropriate things that um, shouldn't be available to students to be able to see. Um, and they really need to make sure that they're following our code of conduct in that sense as well. So during the meeting, we do ask that all students keep their cameras on. And this ensures that our students are participating and engaging with our teachers. Um, and so that the teachers can see whether or not they're actually understanding the content or if they have questions that might be coming up. We do ask that our students, when they are not speaking, that their microphone is muted and our teachers will go through the control system through Zoom so that they'll all know how to mute themselves, how to keep their cameras on and things like that. Additionally, we ask that all devices or electronics besides the computer are turned off. So no TV on, no cell phones, no tablets, et cetera, um, because we wanna make sure that they're not distracting not only to your student, but also to the other students on the Zoom call. Again, we need to make sure that your child is um, complying with the, our code of conduct because um, regardless if they're not in school or on a virtual call, the code of conduct still is in place um, and they are still held to the same standard. And finally, we need to make sure that all students and families are not recording or sharing any of the classroom content on Facebook or any other social media means. Um, if so, um, the, if we find that this is happening, um, the, the administrators will reach out to the families because this is strictly prohibited. At the close of a meeting, you'll want to make sure that the student has the ability to know where the assigned tasks are, what their next steps are, but then also make sure that they understand when office hours, so if they need a little additional support, they can get that additional support. We're in. This is Seesaw. So Seesaw is our student learning management system that we'll be using with our students. Um, and we'll go ahead and play this video so that you can learn a little bit more about Seesaw. Um, we also will be offering a family university which will go through Seesaw in more depth um, so that you as a family can understand how to access it. Your students will also be receiving instruction on how to utilize Seesaw as well in the first weeks of school. Oops. We're in. This is Seesaw. When you click on the journal tab right here, you get to see everything you've made on Seesaw. Making things in Seesaw is so much fun. You'll want to Seesaw every day. One way to add to your Seesaw journal is to click the green add button. It looks like this. You can find it up here. Click it. Look at all these learning tools. Let's start with drawing. You'll use this a lot. You can use all these learning tools to show your thinking and learning, like fun pens and cool text labels and amazing shapes, plus so much more. When you're done, just click the green check. 
your teacher will approve your work, and it'll show up in your journal. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. And there's one more thing we want to show you. Activities! When your teacher assigns you activities in Seesaw, they show up in the Activities tab, right here. You'll see all the activities you need to complete in the To Do section. Find an activity to complete and click the green Add Response button. It looks like this. You get to use all of Seesaw's learning tools. There's so much you can do on Seesaw. Are you ready to try it? Let's Seesaw! So again, we'll go in more in depth with Seesaw at a later date, um, but we just wanted to give you the opportunity to see a brief introduction to what Seesaw was so that you could um, have an idea of what your student learning management system will be this year. So we talked a little bit about additional family training. So the trainings that we'll be offering this year are ClassLink and Seesaw for Families, and this is really our pre-K to two students. Um, we'll also be doing Zoom for Families, which will be for pre-K through 12 students, uh, Parent Square for Families, um, pre-K through 12 as well, and then iReady for Families, which is a K-12 um, program. So um, look for dates and times for these events, and we will we will be posting them through uh, Parent Square, and we'll also have them posted on Facebook for um, the dates and times. We are all so excited to see you on your first day. The teachers are welcoming you to Pleasant Avenue. Feel free to contact me anytime if you have any questions or concerns. Each day, remember to complete the daily screening on Parent Square, wear your name tag, and wear your mask. Have a great day.